Rarangi maunga, tu te ao, tu te po, rarangi tangata, ka mate, mate noa, rarangi raraunga, ka ao, ka awatea, hei oranga, mō tātou katoa, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā hoki tātou katoa. Tuatahi, ka mihi au, uh, ki te mana whinua, o tēnei whinua, o tēnei kainga, um, ki... Uh, te ati awa, nō runga i te rangi, ngāti tama me ngāti toa rangatira, um, e mihi ana hau ki a koutou katoa. A tua rua, ka mihi au, a ki te poari matua o National Digital Forum, a tēnei ka mihi atu au ki a koutou, um, nā koutou uh, te pōwhiri ki a harama ki tēnei hui, te, ki te kōrero mo tēnei kaupapa. Uh, tua toru, a ka mihi au, a ki ngā uh, kai kōrero, um, I tu ai uh, i te atamira, um, nā reira uh, ka mihi hoki au uh, ki te hunga uh, kāri anō kia tū i runga i te atamira, uh, kia kaha kia mai aku tau. Um, a wai hoki, uh, ka mihi hoki au uh, ki te hunga e mātakitaki ana, uh, ki tēnei kōrero, uh, ki te, te hunga e whakarungo ana ki tēnei kōrero. Um, me mihi kātika hoki kia koutou katoa. A ku wai au, a, kei te tātoku mama, ko nuhiti te maunga, ko hawai te awa, ko motu orai te mautere, ko hine tamatea te marai, a, ko ngāti wakarara me ngāti hau ngā hapū, a, ko ngāti prau me ngāti a, me taitanga hau i te ngā iwi, a, ko hine tamatea te marai, a, heu rea hau no te whānau kirikiri, a, me te whānau tautuhi, a, Manuel Jose, a, kei te tātoku pāpa, um, ko Tungariro me Ruapehu ngā maunga, ko Taupo nui a tia te moana, ko Rangitikei te awa, a ko te reu reu te whenua, a ko toko rangi te kainga, a ko Ngati Piki Ahu Waiwai te hapū, a ko te tikanga te marai, a ko Ngati Tuwhare toa, me Ngati Raukawa te au ki te tonga ngā iwi, um, he uri ahau no te whānau paranihi. A, no reira, a... Ko Jacinta Paranihi anai tōku ingoa, a ko anai a te ingoa o taku hoaranga tira hoa mārena, a, no ngā mautere a, o hāmoa ia a, me a, Waikato Tainui a, me ngā pui, puhi. A, no reira, a, me mihi kātika hoki a, ki a koutou katoa. Um, kia ora. <laughs> um, thank you for having me. I'm very humbled um, to be here. Um, I'd firstly like to thank and acknowledge uh, Mana Whenua, um, Te Atiawa, uh, Ngāti Tama and Ngāti Toa Rangatira of um, Te Upoko Te Ika. And I'd like to acknowledge the National Digital Forum Board for inviting me to come and be the key, one of the keynote speakers. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge the, the speakers who have spoken, um, very inspiring, and the ones that are yet to speak um, go hard. <laughs> I am, yeah, I, my name's Jacinta. Uh, yes, I work at um, Stats NZ Tataranga Aotearoa. I'm a senior advisor there. I've been working there for about five years now, close to. Um, but originally I actually was a librarian and I worked at National Library. And so I just want to hear to um, all of our whānau there, um, especially those who I worked with um, developing ngā upoko tukutuku, the Māori subject headings, um, which is very dear to my heart still today. Um, so I just want to shout out to you guys, you know who you are. And yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Um, and my kōrero to you uh, today uh, is called Mānga Tikanga e Arahina, um, being guided by good principles. And um, it's a framework uh, that I developed um, at Stats NZ, and it's designed to help um, help us, that being data practitioners, um, work towards delivering good outcomes um, in our everyday work, and to be responsive to the needs um, of Māori, 
and but also um, those who are most vulnerable uh, in our communities. So yeah, the structure of my uh, kōrero today will be part one to provide a bit of background um, <laughs> and context on what uh, StackTNZ does and uh, just a bit of a brief history of Māori data collection when it's done by government um, and then maybe a bit about the tribunal's recent um, I'll say conclusions on data and digital as taonga and so the second part of my kōrero is really just a bit about the framework itself and how we're using it uh, in the um, an integrated data infrastructure, the IDI. And um, yeah, I'll introduce you to the tikanga that are in this framework and where they came from. And then the last section is just um, the value that we've seen from, we've developed it, but like testing and, and using it in inside of states and just some of the learnings that we've um, gained really and then, yeah, our, I guess our overall aspirations, you know, for um, enhancing Māori Crown relations you know, in the data system. So, I'll go... Yeah. Oh no, which one is it? Be with me. Oh, there we go. Kāpai. So, before we even get to the framework, I feel like um, it's really uh, important to kind of understand you know, the existing environment of data collection um, in, in Aotearoa. And so I'd like to start by talking about what STATS does. So um, it's STATS NZ Tataranga Aotearoa is New Zealand's official data agency. And we collect information from people and organisations uh, through censuses and s surveys. We use this information to publish insights and data about New Zealand and support others to use that data. Um, we produce national statistics on domain areas such as our population and COVID-19, um, businesses, the labour market, the economy, environment, and society, um, God, but there's many other things that we collect data about. Um, and so we, who do we work with? We work with uh, Māori, um, Pacific peoples, communities, we work with businesses, local and central government as well, um, but we also um, serve the international statistical community and so we kind of do some work with uh, the United Nations um, and things that relate to statistical methodology, um, collection, uh, open data as one of them, data linkage, um, standards and quality, um, capability and just other thought leadership areas. Um, Ngāti Kanga Paihere is one of them too. It's been shared internationally. Um, but yeah, I think like stats, you know, is a huge generator of um, New Zealand's data. And so um, with that in mind, I'm just going to take you for a bit of a look at brief history of Māori data collection and data generation and what some of the issues might be with Māori. So since around about the 1850s, um, successive governments have been collecting statistics on Māori, largely to monitor and assess Māori policy. And for a long time, most, most of the statistics about Māori were gathered um, as a byproduct of information collected for the mainstream and didn't really kind of meet the needs of Māori so over the years, uh, Māori researchers and, and commentators have questioned the relevance of existing official data about Māori. You know, what is measured and the standards by which the what is measured had very little input from Māori at all. And the issue with that is the, what you're collecting um, may or may not reflect you know, adequately um, you know, the Māori worldview of realities and, or Māori worldview or realities of, of Māori uh, at the grassroots. And yet, we know government policies, programs and services, they're created, you know, on this information, which to a large extent doesn't, you know, meet the needs of Māori. So, um, we, so we know, like, with our treaty claims, um, the 90s, most of the historical treaty claims now, most of them have been settled with a few handful left to go um, and uh, 
Māori have taken progressively more control over their own development. Um, and so the demand for statistical information from Māori authorities and community-based organisations has increased even more so. And re recent criticism from our iwi partners has been that us as government officials, we, we still struggle to understand um, the value of the use of and the need for iwi data. Um, iwi continue to request data that, that meets their needs um, and enable them to exercise their rights and interests as te tiriti partners. You know, some of these needs uh, have been met from existing information and some by reproducing information from surveys in the form of in which the users require it, but some of these needs cannot be met at all because the data isn't there, doesn't exist, or there's a potential, potential to breach confidentiality. So having to share personal, private information, um, which we uh, in the data system are still dealing with now. And Māori data is very important in the sense that um, the collection of it, good collection of it, can impact things uh, such as um, Māori seats, representation, government, and NTHB funding per region, and there, there are many other uh, uses there. Okay, so I'll move on. And this is just a, an image of um, Census of the Māori Population, 1878, a nice table there uh, showing iwi data, the Ngāti Haua is the iwi in question. It's cut by hapu, by residents or kainga, um, by gender and by age. And it's just, uh, I just find it quite fascinating. So the government has been collecting this information over time and we still kind of struggle today, you know, with um, iwi data. Why is that, you know? What do we need to do to get us there? Um, and so, I'll just go. And um, I'm really excited by this. But so this is um, the one of the conclusions that the tribunal made uh, last year in the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, t uh, formerly the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This is the in, um, inquiry that <coughs> well, a claim was filed in 2016 to the tribunal. It concerned the then TPP agreement and originally the issues for the final stage of that inquiry included the Crown's engagement with Māori over the TPP and CPTPP and the secrecy of those negotiations which were eventually resolved through mediation. However, the remaining issues concern the e-commerce provisions of that agreement and data sovereignty. So, um, with claimants arguing the protection of tikanga Māori, mātauranga Māori and Māori decision making over data needed, that needed to be maintained, upheld. And the tribunal recognised that data is part of mātauranga Māori or, and that mātauranga is a taonga. That puts a heightened risk, or ha sorry, heightened duty on the Crown to actively protect those rights interests and kaitiaki responsibilities under te tiriti. And they also said that Māori data, um, it may be a component of mātauranga Māori or in combination with related data, um, be or have the potential to be a taonga. Um, so yeah, mātauranga Māori, and this includes Māori rights and interests in the digital domain. Again, and the Crown has an active duty to protect those rights and interests especially in a field that is subject to rapid change and it's constantly evolving. So I've just got the thing, I'll read it out. While we cannot say that all data is a taonga, we recognise that from a te ao Māori perspective, the way the digital domain is governed and regulated has important implications for the integrity of the Māori knowledge system, which is a taonga. So, jumping ahead, straight to into it, what is Ngāti Kanga Paihere? So, with that in mind, it creates an opportunity here for the Crown to move forward, to um, act of, uh, yeah, uh, enact its duty to protect the rights and interests of Māori and data and digital. So, Ngāti Kanga Paihere. Well, it actually means um, 
to bind with good intentions. Um, so it, this is a principles-based framework, and we're, we're seeking to guide a culturally appropriate use of data, and we're currently using it to guide operational decisions about data access. And so um, our tikanga paihere is to guide safe, responsible, and culturally appropriate use of data, um, ensure data use is carefully considered, and ensure data practices occur in good faith. Um, what we like is that uh, we try to encourage people to think of others when, in, when working with data, um, being mindful towards those most highlighted in the data, um, be aware of their needs, their context, and how the work, the data work, the research project will benefit them. And so this framework, we think it helps data users understand the need to engage when appropriate. Um, the views of communities, subject matter experts, and those with an interest in the data use and or the research project. Uh, this is encouraged because we want data users to consider that context of the communities most impacted by the mahi um, in order for like a potentially wider impact. And the other thing about this is that, yeah, Te Kanga Māori sits at the core of this framework. Um, and that's because te kanga Māori makes sense. <laughs> it's basic human principles. It guides the way that, for Māori anyway, that we interact with each other, form relationships, how we see ourselves, how we identify. Um, and te kanga are good at guiding us through the ethical side of decision making as well and can help us form the yeah good behaviour, good practice when engaging with other Māori. Right, so, I am. Cool. So here's the two, well, here's the, the um, image of the framework to the left, Ngāti Kanga Paihere. Sitting next to it is the five safes, and I'll come to that after I've talked through Ngāti Kanga Paihere. So, beginning with the orange po <laughs> in the middle, that's how you read it. You start with the middle. Those in the middle are pr uh, core principles. First of all, at the top, um, we have... Um, the part where we remind data users when using especially integrated data, linked data, um, to have appropriate skills and experience and establish suitable relationships with communities. And you move down the two sides, coming off there are Pukinga and Whakapapa. And Pukinga, Pukinga on the left in the blue, that speaks to skills and experience, or skills and expertise. And then it's balanced out on the other side by the um, tikanga whakapapa, which looks at the extent of community relationships. And so we move down to the next pillar, to the next, um, down the orange in the middle there, um, where we're talking about maintaining public confidence and trust to use data. That's the aspiration. And then the tikanga on the side of it uh, is how we might like to look at that. So pono on the left, um, is looking at accountability and transparency uh, to the communities of interest, the ones that are most impacted by the research, and how, how accountable are you being, perhaps, could you be to them? And that's balanced off on the other side with tika, and tika in this diagram here represents value for all. Um, yeah, what kind of benefit um, is there for Māori and and all New Zealanders too. And then we move down to the third principle there, use good data standards and practices. Um, and below, have clear purpose and action, balance benefits and risk. So we've, I won't sort of go through them too much, but this is how this framework works. Um, and on the other side um, is the five safes uh, framework. And now that uh, framework came from the UK a national Statistics Office, and um, my colleagues in the Integrated Data Infrastructure, IDI, were already using this um, to ensure that the data use, the data itself was safe, and uh, uh, bona fide researchers were using this data. And so I can walk you through that. Safe people at the top, that's talking about researchers, making sure that they're vetted before coming in to use this particular um, tool, IDI, 
and um, safe projects. Just we uh, researchers have to demonstrate that the project they have is in the public interest, or pu and uh, safe settings in the purple is um, just a range of privacy and security arrangements, just to keep that data from any breaches. Um, and Stats does that by having or creative data labs, and that's what um, researchers are trying to get access to, is the labs to work with the data that they've asked for. So safe data ensures that um, identity is protected, so any um, personal information, identifying information is removed, and, that, and researchers only get the data sets that they ask for. And um, safe, safe output is um, where stat staff need to ensure or check, do checks on the outputs to make sure that no identifying information is released. And so that's kind of the five safes. And we develop our tikanga paihere in sort of alongside the five safes. And what I can tell you now is for the last maybe two, three years, our tikanga paihere is pretty much taken over, <laughs> moved in and, yeah, it helped us to see a lot more when we were assessing applications. Yeah, all right. So, um, IDI, I mean, f for the benefit of those who may, may, know, may not know what that is, um, so basically, as I mentioned earlier, Stats collects a lot of data, comes from different sources. Um, we'll, we've, we link it together. Um, to create integrated data. And linking data um, is a way for us to get maximum benefit for New Zealand from the data that we manage. However, um, this particular information that's, or data that's sitting in the IDI is administrative data. Um, and that's basically data that uh, is collected by agencies it's about the operations including the interactions that they have with public, with the public. Um, and there are limitations with admin data, uh, which speak to the quality of that information. Um, but there are also positives too to using admin data sources, um, such as being able to see, um, for example, the participation of public in, in any given program or service from these agencies or organisations. That can be a good thing, but there are sort of issues yeah. Um, well, so researchers use linked data or integrated data for projects that are in the public interest. And again, so we collect data from different agencies and, and we also ourselves, um, we provide information into this big infrastructure as well from our surveys too. Um, but we also have data from non-government organisations too. And it's all kind of, I'll say, cut into what we call microdata, and that's data that's broken down to individual household business level. And it's really, some of it is highly sensitive um, because of the personal data that's there, but it, what it relates to, health, justice, uh, social welfare, tax, education, business, um, police, we've got data there um, sitting in there. So there is um, sensitivities, we do, we can't exactly share it openly, and that's why we have this process um, to, to protect to keep that data safe. Um, so yeah, um, the process I'm talking about uh, that this framework applies to is the application process, and researchers wanting the data assessed on a set of considerations, and that's what we use Ngati Kangapaihere for in the Five Safes framework. And so, yeah, we look at the researchers come in, we look at what they're doing, their project, the purpose of their project, um, the data that they want to use, the data sets that they want to use to create their own ones. Um, and we've got their methods as well, how they, they might do that. Um, we also look at things like um, the kind of the scale of the, the purpose of which, how much it changes. Um, from the original collection purpose, so we look at things like that. And, but we also try to understand maybe how the end product, the research, or even just maybe the throughput as well, working with communities, how that might be responsive to the treaty, utility, and human rights, for that matter as well, not to discriminate against others. All right, moving on. <laughs> so, 
why are stats using it for the reasons given here. I mean, um, it's a great framework and we want to do better. Um, we want to understand what people are interested in um, by way of um, collecting data and information. And it's helping us to work better with the communities that we serve. And yeah, I also, there's a lot going on um, around us at the moment, wider context, we've got a Māori Crown relations context as well. Um, something like this can help us move forward our relationships with Māori and iwi. And for us to understand how we could, as a Crown agency, um, actively protect Māori rights and interest in data, um, and especially at an operational level too, to ensure that um, those aspirations and need for data are being met. Um, but yeah, all right, we'll move forward to the, this is the bit here where, for those of you that might be interested in the Māori aspects of this, um, so <coughs> this, as I was developing, oh, I've been kind of working on this now for maybe a few years, I think since 2018, I had help from Maui Hudson, and um, these tikanga actually come from his earlier work, which is my next slide over, but, so just to give you a bit of context, um, at the bottom there, where, the, where, where it says Ngā tikanga paihere, mā ngā tikanga e arahina, be guided by good principles, that's the kaupapa of this framework, is to do good with other people's data, and it's joined by the kawa in the middle, the po in the middle was actually the kawa, the aspiration set for meeting the kaupapa down the bottom. And um, it's balanced by the tikanga uh, on the side, the diagonal down. Those are the tikanga procedures that we're going to do to meet those kawa in the middle. And um, the horopaki up the top, that's the integrated data context. But w I know from having developed this mahi and um, socialising within states and outside of states, that context can change. So that changes. The kaupapa, not so much, that will never change. The kawa and tikanga will align itself to the horopaki. But there wouldn't be very, there isn't really much um, change. So, um, and when I said we've tested it on other data contexts, one of them um, which was quite successful was the Māori business statistics that Stats produces. The team asked us for a bit of guidance and what happened was I ended up creating a, a whariki, a bit of a mat with these tikanga in it and the kawa and it helped them to uh, progress three of their uh, work streams. Um, so, oh gosh. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, um, Maui Hudson helped me to um, create a tikanga paihere. He had done earlier work developing tikanga um, in a data use context. And so um, the model here is called Te Mana o Te Raraunga, um, and it can be used to inform how data and data use may be conceptualised through a Māori cultural lens. And the model supports Māori data sovereignty, which anticipates Māori governance over Māori data. The model assesses different dimensions of data to help determine the tonga nature of data through provenance, meaning where it came from, opportunity, um, how the data could be used, and utility, how it's currently being used. So it's a beautiful model and I encourage you to look, look it up. And yeah, so yeah, we've seen um, a lot of value in using this. Not only does it keep the data safe, we think, but it keeps us safe as the data practitioners, as the workers. So we definitely appreciate the way like it helps us surface gaps in data projects and um, see things like data lim limitations with the data and sensitivities as well that perhaps we weren't aware of before. Um, it helps us to think all of those things, unintentional harm to communities, breaches, reputational risks, um, yeah, and looking for the alignment to community values. Um, so, yeah, w we've seen lots of value in, in this, and I know it can do a lot more because I know it's bigger than data because it's come from Te Māori. I know that it is. Um, yeah, it's very flexible as well. Now, it's presented in a way that fits 
integrated data infrastructure, but I can do a whole lot more. And so, yeah, I'm pretty certain, you know, um, there are other models out there. Um, but yeah, could you apply these concepts to your own mahi, to your own work? Or are you already applying concepts to your own work, to your own mahi, in your own context? What's that been like? I'd love to know. Um, I'll take this moment now to have some questions, if that's okay. Kia ora koutou, ko Fiona Field in Toka Ingoa. I am the co-chair of the National Digital Forum and I also work at Te Tari Tai Whenua, Department of Internal Affairs as the Programme Director Digital there. And I'm really delighted that to Jacinta agreed to be a keynote to share her mahi uh, na, ta, na, na te kanga with us because I could see that there's direct relevance to everything that we do in the glam sector and that this is a model that we could be picking up and run, running with. And that's where I'm going to centre my questions today. I'm, not, I'm sure that you expected that, Jacinta, because I told you I would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, I wanted to start, though, with some of your, um, what you've done in the past, and that is Nga Upoko. Aye. And, Aye. and that amazing work, which has been how many, uh, two decades? Yeah thinking about oh let me think I know they wanted to do it 1998 yeah and then it just sort of yeah it was a movement as well yeah. what I remember being told um and then the headings were launched would that be about oh yeah. three yeah <laughs> so much old. happened in 2003 so the Māori subject headings and you've been yeah. involved it sounds like since the beginning <sighs> so I was wondering uh, was there anything that you took from that experience and working, and what have you taken from the GLAM sector, working mm. in libraries and working with metadata and as a cataloger, mm. and and what has that gifted, what's the, the koha mm. that that has given to yeah. Nga Tikanga? And then what, what do you think Nga Tikanga could be gifting back? Oh, that's a good question. I think so. I remember thinking about this, um, and I have said it before in other presentations. Um, Ngāi Pukutukutuku, that mahi, inspired Ngāti Kanga Paihere. I knew, um, so when I was involved with that mahi, oh, what year is that, 2008, um, till about 2012, um, I, saw, I saw that it was possible to put tikanga into a process and follow it, like, and, but I had really good, great um, people around me, so my fellow catalogers, and I, but I also had um, our Māori experts as well. So, and I, yeah, absolutely loved that mahi, um, but more so th it was the kaupapa mm. too, um, because having access to information um, in, you know, te reo Māori um, was so exciting to me and just uh, it kind of made me me feel a part of that mahi too um, and so when I think about Ngāti Kanga Paihere you know I, I look at it and I I guess I created it because I wanted um, more Māori thinkers to be mm. a part of this data world tell Māori data world um, that it's not it's not hard you know what I mean like it's not a world you can't belong to. You are there, no matter what. Um, so yeah, I, I did that answer your question. I, mean I think so. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it seems like the whole experience has been woven through everything that you do, and that the weaving continues. I had a great mentor, and her name was Rangiria Hidley. She was too funny to So yeah, I, I know it's possible, and yeah, I continue on thinking about her and how strong she was, so I'm trying to continue that good mahi. Mm. Um, yeah, I know it can be done, yeah. Yeah. Because now it's time to mentor the next lot to come through. And yeah. that's where my focus is for this framework, yeah. It's about the next generation coming, yeah. Yeah, intergenerational change, huh? Um, so, w so much we do in the glam sector is about mm. data, or metadata descriptive oh, metadata yeah. and and I don't know that we think about it all the time as data 
like mm. as this is and and how and what captured me when I first saw you present on this is actually this everything in this framework could be relevant to what we're doing with the data about Taonga and about um, the collections yeah. and the holdings and a lot of conversations that I've been part of recently are around how we can change we how can we work with Māori to ensure that descriptive metadata is more meaningful, relevant, that there's some more control, well there is control of it, and what is it that we can do to ensure that Māori can provide their own metadata so that it's meaningful. If we were doing things like that, where should we be starting with Ngā Tīkanga? Ooh, gee, that's a big question. I mean, keep it simple. Um, blank canvas, you know, you haven't got the answers. Uh, work with, work with the communities. Um, and as I experienced through uh, Upoko Tuku Tuku, um, it was wonderful having, you know, two different perspectives, you know, Māori and then our cataloguing <laughs> and then library all together. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was so cool. Um, and starting small like that and then kind of working your way. Um, who knows, like, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I would kind of say at this point. <laughs> Start small yeah. and focus and have the right conversations mm. and take the time to talk. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. listen. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if there's anything that I've kind of noticed, um, we don't listen, I think, mm. as um, Crown agents. As, yeah, and I, yeah, and I, I just wish... We were more, um, we thought more about who we're talking to. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's something to take away, hey? <laughs> Think more about who we're talking to. Um, so I'm wondering about direct, whether you, so you've used this in stats, but mm. are you able to share a little bit more about who else has been using the framework? Oh. <laughs> I know, I'm like, oh. Jeez, 2022. I, so I have done a few presentations to other agencies. Um, so Oranga Tamariki was one of them. Um, I think I did one with ACC mm -hmm. a while. This is a while ago, before kind of COVID mm. hit. Um, and of course, that, that kind of slowed us down, being able to socialise out. There's interest, um, but it takes time. Yeah. It is a lot of mahi for, for people doing their own thing and then they realise, oh crap, I have to do even more. And that just, that can overwhelm some of our colleagues. So yeah, I have to do what I just said. Yep. Um, get to know them, go slow and try and understand their context so that they can be part of Ngāti Kanga Paihere. Yeah. So, um, so I guess that's a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> Is it mm -hmm. throw down a wero to us that if we really want to be using data in the right way and developing data and doing more research and and creating data, we should be starting with Nā, nā Tikanga and, um, and maybe reaching out to you. Would that be okay? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> no problems there. Um, and I've got my um, email address, at least, you know, people, if, if you have any questions and that, about it, you want to know more detail, yeah, because it takes quite a while <laughs> to sort of like share what, what it's really about, yeah. 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 Well, so we'll make sure that um, Jacinta's contact details are all available mm -hmm. and that the links to uh, Ngāti Kanga Paheri and um, other links that she has mentioned today are shared with you on the channels. Uh, all right, I'm just going to do a little time check. Are we still good? Oh, so we've got four minutes. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can wind up now, unless okay. there's more questions that have come through. Um, but I think we're all finished and that we'll throw back to Auckland. And kia ora everyone. I ho hope you've enjoyed the session and that you t can take something away and pick up that wero that Jacinta has put down for us. Uh, as the glam sector and as people that work with data mm. uh, every day uh, and how we could be working with Māori data in a, in a way that makes honours 
Tata's mm. tongue. Kia ora.